Okay, hello everyone. So I'm Yu Peng from Autodesk. So today I'm going to talk about parallelism and the thread safety by tell you how to write a log-free container. Uh, in this specific slides, we'll talk about signal slots, a log-free one. So what is a signal and a slot? Uh, I can tell you that in one sentence, it's just a vect std vector of std function. That's it, done. That's it for signal and slots in single thread case. Yeah, and if we uh, think it as a data structure, the interface of the signal slots contains only three methods. The first one is a signal can be connected to a slot. Uh, oh, a slot can be connected to a signal, which is basically register a callback into a signal or an event. Like you can, in the UI programming, you can say when the mouse is clicked, do something. That is a connect. And the second method in the interface is emit, which is basically call all the stored function in the array. And the last interface is disconnect. Disconnect is means remove one function from the array. Okay, so here is an example. That's pretty straightforward. You add a Navda of callback function into that uh, signal. Yeah, you emit it, you call it, and you remove it. Uh, to go over some more nasty thing, can you do something, for example, if I say, can I de re de disconnect myself in the callback itself? For example, I want to register a invent callback thing. If a mouse click, first do something, and then remove this callback. So just the do uh, this thing for the first mouse click event. This, uh, this characteristic, we call it recursive. Uh, that's one part of the thing. Uh, that's basically all the things about signal slots. Uh, but the fundamental challenge we have is to make this thing thread safe and uh, non-blocking. By non-blocking, we mean all the concurrent connect, disconnect, and emit, all these calls should not wait for each other or even synchronized uh, in a se global sequence or whatever. They should just uh, pass through each other, like what the animation looks like. Yeah, you can see it. I like the animation. Because I'm the Maya team. Okay, I'm now showing you how we do that from the algorithm pre uh, perspective. So first, how should we call the function in a thread safe way? So pretty simple. We assign each function another status. Uh, so for example, in this case, the first element of the first function is already disconnected. We do not call it. If the element is still initializing, we don't call it. If it's uh, already being called, we don't call it. Uh, we just call it in the case uh, it's just a, in a ready and good status. And then after this approach, we think about how to remove one element from our uh, signal, which is pretty simple. You just mark it dirty or bad or whatever. <laughs> you just mark it bad, and then you put it back into a recycle queue. So this space can be reused, recycled. And then how can we insert some new functions into the signal. We first try to reuse the elements inside the recycle queue. And uh, you can see this elements is getting reused. It was in the recycle queue. And then we initializing these values, reuse these slots here. And if there is another one, this uh, element six, uh, you can see the execution flow is still inside the uh, element six, so this function is still actually being used. So we, so we cannot actually delay this ad element or reuse this element. So we put it back into the recycle queue and append some more storage into our array at the end. And then we basically uh, initializing in place the function inside there. So how to do this part in ThreadSafe? Use TBB, Thread Building Blocks from Intel and making an advertisement. <laughs> That's much more easier than write it yourself. So 
that's a fancy animation part. I will then share with you some, yeah, some uh, ideas about our general advice about how we write uh, log free things. So uh, before that, you want to ask why, want we, why would we want to write log free things? Because this code crashed boost in performance. It's just a twice fast uh, as boost. So you want to write something like that. And uh, it can be used in real time system because all the time can be predicted. So, okay, let's go through the code of some general ideas. First, if you want, want to write something with a log free algorithm, make it reference stable. So std vector, if you push back an element, the, all the existing iterators will be invalidated. So that is not something you generally want for a thread in a concurrent case. You want to use std dq, which is a reference stable container in terms of pushback and insertion. Next, so log free is not the same as not using std mutex. Although in Maya, we forbid the use of std mutex. Yeah, basically forcing people to think about how to write something yeah, in another way. But do not write this code. You do not use std mutex, but you write the code that is worse than std mutex. The code I showed you here is std atomic, which is basically sometimes used to represent the signature of log-free algorithm. But this code itself is just a spin log. And it's a very bad spin log in terms of performance. Don't write that code. Yeah, recognize the, hi the hidden logs inside your atomic or so-called log-free algorithm. <laughs> and now let's come to a, what about the log-free. The true nature of log-free or block-free algorithm is very, very short critical section. For example, if I, even if I write the critical section here, which is sometimes usually representing a log, but the critical section itself is just a, an add instruction. And uh, by shortening your critical section to something, a few instructions, the CPU some, may be able to do something to do that in one instruction and very minimal synchronization between different cores. That's the good things and what you should to do to do log-free algorithm. And then, uh, we need to do large work in uh, private, not in the, your critical section. Here, if you need to ever need to do something, like say, a, a location, a malloc, inside your critical section, rewrite your code. That don't pass code review in Autodesk. <laughs> uh, so what you really need to do is do something like this pattern. You allocate and deallocate in private and uh, the only crit uh, critical section in this, uh, the code below is this line, compare exchange strong. Yeah, I will recommend always use compare exchange strong. Strong, strong is good. Do not use the, the, the code in previous slide, compare exchange weak. <laughs> do not use that. Compare exchange weak is usually used in lock or spin lock. It represents that, yeah. And then I will go to the most nasty part of C++, memory orders. How many of you have used memory order for atomic operations? Do you like it? I assume you don't like it. Uh, because I don't like it. So <laughs> let's just show you some code. So here is a write operation. I write to this uh, variable, and th then I load another variable. I assume it will be executed in sequentially, so following the len1, len2, len4, but in fact, not. It sometimes get executed out of order. You must be careful this behavior is unpredictable because it's platform dependent, operating system dependent, CPU dependent, and CPU configuration dependent. We only cache this back in very specific OSX machine. Okay, and then to avoid such kind of the memory order madness, uh, there is one lazy way of doing that, is uh, 
to using the sequential cast memory order. That is, by default, the C++ community decides that for you. But this is bad, because by using sequential cast, you are synchronizing with every one of the automatic variables in you, all the programs. Be for example, if some libraries, third-party libraries, use atomic, you will be synchronizing with them without, well, at the explicit C C. So that's bad. Instead, I will recommend you combine, well, dependent status into one automatic variable. The key insight here is automatic variable are just bits. They are bits, they are not typed. They are not typed at all. If you have integer, it's just 32 bits, nothing more, nothing less. Automatic don't, it's not typed at all. Don't use strong, uh, if you write, ever write some code, automatic of some struct, no, do not do that. Just uh, run, wrap it around of some bits. That's it, and use bits, uh, use bitwise operations a lot for automics, <laughs> because that's what is what you really get. Okay, so that's it. Thanks.